Tech fans, welcome back once again to Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Eric, your host, and today we're going to talk to you guys about the different types of cooling methods used for the PC. I know that for a lot of people out there, advanced users are like, oh, I know all that stuff, but believe it or not, I get email all the time from people saying, hey, I still don't know what these different types of cooling are. So for those people who are interested, stay tuned because let's check it out and let's talk about the different types of cooling that you can use on your PC. In the beginning, CPUs weren't very hot at all. They actually ran quite cool. They start off using them in phone technology and that type of stuff many, many years ago before you even saw the onset of the PC. And for those type of things, they used what was called passive cooling. Now, passive cooling was basically just a heat sink on top of the CPU that helped dissipate the heat away from it. There was no fan, no moving parts, no nothing like that whatsoever. That's passive cooling. Not exactly what any of us as enthusiasts use these days. We all need to have at least what the next step in the phase is, and that is active cooling. What is active cooling? Well, like the name active, you know, suggests, it means there's something moving, something's happening. That means a fan. So if an active cooling, you get the heat sink, usually some, a bunch of heat fins to help take that stuff away and dissipate it. Then you get a fan helping to blow it away even more away from the CPU. There are, however, a lot of uses for air cooling around the world. The only thing is though, is if you live in a really, really super hot place, to keep that damn thing cool, you're gonna have to have that fan going full blast, which is gonna create a lot of noise. Now, things like the Noctua, Silver Arrow, these have been proven again over and over again with the right CPU. They can do great cooling and achieve decent overclocking events. Next up is liquid cooling. And this is what I personally prefer. It's what I've been using for years. And it's just like basically my cup of tea when it comes to cooling. Now, as far as liquid cooling goes, there are two types of units that you can get your hands on. There's a closed loop system. Now, most closed loop systems contain a single radiator, the heat sink, your pump and all your stuff is all pre-built inside of it. And you basically just put this onto your system just like you'd attach a normal heat sink and fan unit. Only difference is it's pre-filled liquid. The drawback to this, however, is though expansion is very, very limited, and it's usually only used for one component in a system at a time. Custom loop systems are an entirely different breed of animal, and these are what we usually base our systems on here at Tech of Tomorrow. Once in a while, we'll use a closed loop system because we like to make things nice and convenient, but if we're building some kind of crazy super system, you can bet it's going to be a custom loop system. So what does that mean, custom loop system? Oh, what's he talking about? Is he speaking alien? So basically a custom loop system is you can cool many different parts. You can go all crazy. You can cool your memory. You can cool your CPU, your GPU. You can cool it all, attach a bunch of multi-different radiators, pumps, and have this huge giant system going that's going to keep your system running cool and pretty damn quiet. Now, this requires, though, somebody who has at least a little bit of degree of knowledge on how to be technical and how to do technical stuff. When I got sick, I finally decided I need somebody to help me do this stuff, so I I hired Anthony Reynolds. You guys know Mr. Thrasher too. He's our in-house builder and he's been doing this stuff for me for years and years and years. I really like a custom loop system and I kind of always had a general rule of thumb, like one rad per part. So like for me, if I have a CPU, then I need a rad for my CPU. Maybe single, single might work, or maybe double depending on the build. If I got a video card, I want another rad. I got another video card, I want another rad. The reason for this is that the more liquid I've got flowing through that system and flowing through their radiators, then the cooler my system is gonna be able to be when my CPU is running hot. Now this next type of cooling kind of like went out kind of like Disco did, and this is called Peltier or thermoelectric cooling. This was actually cool before CPUs actually became really hot. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, because that's really how it was. The problem is it's refrigeration type cooling. You have one side of a tag that's very, very cold, like a refrigerator, but the other side of that is very, very hot and that needs to be cooled. Well, you cool it, use water, liquid, or anything else that can sometimes create condensation. And as CPUs became hotter and hotter and hotter, Peltier cooling just kind of like just slid the back seat because it's really only good to keep a CPU cool that you know is not going to be running too hot. So those are all the types of stuff that you use for cooling at your home. Any of these types can be done depending on your technical level or if you want to have a buddy come help you, you can use and do all those types of things at home and they're all available. Now, some drawbacks I also feel about Peltier that killed it was you needed a totally separate 12 volt power supply. Yeah, which was like gonna cost us like, you know, 60, 80 bucks just to be able to power the coil that was doing the Peltier. So rather expensive, didn't work well, went out the window. 
Now, are there other types of cooling out there? Yeah, there are. There are plenty of guys out there who go out to these extreme overclocking events, and they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff with liquid nitrogen and all kinds of other stuff. But this stuff is not for the home user at all. You're not going to really see a guy at home and, you know, talking to his friends and go, what are you doing? Dude? Oh, I'm liquid nitrogen all day long, just cooling my computer. It's just too much hassle. Nobody's really going to be doing it. Sometimes you can get special licensing, depending on where you live, to get that giant tank, you know, over to your house to be able to use it. And like, what are you, a welder or something? Or what else are you doing? Hmm. So it's just a lot, you know, a pain in the butt to use those stuff. But if you're going to become an extreme overclocker, then, hey, you may want to check out some of those pro guys out there and see what they do. But none of that stuff's for home use. The stuff I will talked about today can be done by anybody at home. So thanks for watching Tech of Tomorrow. I'm Eric your host, and I hope you guys like this video. I know for people out there, there's one question that I got to talk about, and that is, dun, 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 ambient temperature. Got to apologize. I made a video before, and I said the ambient temperature was different between the different cooling. I was entirely wrong. The energy is all the same, so no matter what kind of cooling that you're using, the ambient temperature will be affected the same depending on what kind of system you're using because the heat and the energy, obviously, has to go somewhere. So, peace out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys back from there.